A warm website, word of welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Tom Belzac, and we're broadcasting from St. Kenneth Parish in Plymouth, Michigan. This weekend, we're celebrating the, the liturgy of the fourth Sunday of Easter. We'll once again offer the opportunity for you to remember your moms or the mom figures in your life, both living and deceased uh, throughout the month of May, but especially on Mother's Day weekend. The list of names will appear in our bulletin the weekend of May 8th and 9th. The Mother's Day memorial envelopes are available in the church or at the parish office. We do invite you to print the name to avoid spelling errors and to submit your request prior to 12 noon by Wednesday, May the 5th. Our St. Vincent de Paul Society will be hosting a clothing drive the weekend of May 22nd and 23rd. There is a great need for summer clothing for the poor and your generosity is greatly appreciated. If you have a PIX, that little small container that protects the consecrated host, if you take communion to the sick, if you have a PIX that you are not using, uh, we would encourage you, if you can, to return it either to the parish office or to the sacristy in the weeks ahead. For those of you who are joining us uh, through the Internet, we also encourage you to log on to our parish bulletin to be kept abreast of all parish activities in the weeks to come. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And mindful of our need for God's mercy, love, and forgiveness, we call to mind our sins. We invite the Lord to give us pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you were sent from God to show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you teach us how to live. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, by your death and resurrection, you give us the promise of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. For he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord.
the Lord be with you and with your spirit. This is a reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd, whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay, and he has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead. They will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. That is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. And for our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, a warm word of welcome for all of you who are joining us through the internet this weekend. What a crazy week it's been. We had snow earlier this week, and now the temperatures are warming up. Spring has sprung. But remember, we live in Michigan. As we continue the joy of this Easter season, on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we always are given in the gospel passage the image of Jesus as the shepherd, the good shepherd. Today, he refers to himself by that very title. I am the good shepherd. My sheep know me and I know them. They follow and they hear my, 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 my voice and they follow in my footsteps. Uh, you know, when we are cons when, if Jesus is the good shepherd, then we must be considered part of the flock. We must be sheep. And yet, over the course of my now almost 41 years of priestly service, there have been times and occasions when individuals have come up to me very concerned about being considered to be like a sheep. They oftentimes say, I'm not a sheep. I'm a beloved child of God. I'm not a sheep. I'm not a farm animal. I have a, I have a, a mind of my own, and I have a conscience and I can make decisions that are good and bad. Please don't refer to me as a sheep. And I don't think the scriptures are encouraging us to think of ourselves as sheep, but the image of the relationship that exists between the shepherd and the sheep is, I think, what the focus of the scriptures, the scriptures are all about. Uh, I'm not a farmer. I don't own sheep. I don't own cattle, uh, but I've done some reading this week, and there's a, a little bit of a distinction between a cow and a sheep. Besides the obvious, I read and I learned that, that, that cows are very confident animals, and that if you, if you were to stand behind a herd of cows and make a noise or slap some sticks together, the cow would turn its head after, after grazing, look at you making the noise, and determine in their own minds that they don't like what they're hearing. And so the cows will move forward to get away from the sound of the noise. Cows can be herded, and they're usually herded by pushing them forward. A sheep on the other hand, is not as confident as a cow. If you were to stand in a field of sheep and create a loud, a loud sound or noise, the sheep would immediately scatter in every direction. In order to herd sheep, you have to get them to trust you. And that's the image that is used in the scriptures. The trusting image between the shepherd who protects the sheep and the flock. Cows are herded from behind. Sheep are herded 
from ahead, by being ahead of them, the shepherd uses his voice. The sheep hear the voice. They trust the sound of the voice, and they follow in the footsteps of the shepherd. And perhaps one of the reasons why on the fourth Sunday of Easter we're always given the image of the shepherd with the sheep is to remind us of our relationship with God through Jesus. Our Lord doesn't coerce us or force us to follow. Our relationship with Jesus is like that of a shepherd with its sheep. We hear his voice. We trust in Jesus. And because we trust in him, we follow in his footsteps. When we come to church on Sunday, we come not because we're obligated. That would be our Lord forcing us to attend worship. We come to church on Sunday because we recognize that when we gather as a people of faith, that when two or three are gathered in God's name, that the risen Christ is powerfully present. And we come as people who want to listen to the words of God proclaimed in the scriptures. We want to add our voice of praise to God in gratitude and thanksgiving for the blessings that we enjoy. And we come to be nourished and fed on the saving sacrament of the Eucharist. We come because we trust that we will be fed and nourished by being part of a, a, a group that believes in Jesus and wants to follow in his footsteps. There's a big difference between being coerced into doing something and doing something because of love. And that's the difference, and that's the image that the scriptures present to us. Our Lord is the shepherd because he, like he said in today's gospel, he's not the hired hand. The hired hand, when, when an enemy comes, will, will take care of himself. He'll, he'll run away and worry, not worry about the sheep. He doesn't, he doesn't belong to them. There's no relationship between the hired hand and the shepherd. But Jesus is the shepherd. And we are the sheep in the sense that we, want, we belong to trust in him, to hear his voice, to follow in his footsteps. The scriptures today also give us another beautiful image that we sometimes forget about. We heard it in the second reading when St. John tells us, we are God's children now, right here, right now. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. John tells us that we are God's children now. And we're also going to be like God in heaven. The second half of today's reading reminds us that what we, will, we will, what we will be has not yet been revealed. But when it is revealed, especially in the midst of the joy of this Easter season, the fact that Jesus lived among us, suffered, died, and was buried, but rose from the dead, and he promises us that we too will share a life experience beyond the human life experience, that we are God's children right here and now, and what we shall become, John says, has not yet been revealed, but when it is revealed, we shall be like God, and we shall see God as God is. A message of hope, especially in this season of, of Easter. We are people who are not coerced, but we're drawn, drawn in trust, drawn by God's love to listen to the voice of Jesus, to follow in his footsteps that we might come to share the fullness of the life that he promises.
and we profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. <clears throat> Amen. Let us pray. For the church, that we may distinguish the voice of the Good Shepherd from all the other messages that we hear and faithfully respond to all Christ's invitations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that God will give him strength Help him model the dedication of the Good Shepherd and be a good example for all church leaders, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are laying down their lives in caring for sick children, the developmentally disabled, the elderly or terminally ill, that God will renew them and fill them with energy and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our confirmation candidates, that they will be open to the gifts that the Holy Spirit offers them and that they will enrich the church with their talents and energy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all discerning their life calling, that young people may listen carefully to God's invitations and courageously respond to God with trusting faith and generous love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who care for them, we especially remember in prayer Steve Zondlack, Jan McCarthy, Mary Brooks, Joanne Donahue, Regina Todarski, Joanne Plank, Catherine McNamara, Father George Charnley. May God bring them healing and hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ gives us the Eucharist as a pledge of everlasting life. We pray for all who have died. We especially remember and pray for Dolores Podsilic, wife of the late Edward Podsilic, Anna Hearn, daughter of Melissa Hearn and sister of Sarah Haupt, all who have died due to the COVID-19 virus, that God will welcome them into the company of saints forever, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In this liturgy, we pray for all weekend mass requests. The special intentions of Tom Zaharski, and we remember in prayer, Len Mayers, Robert Heck, Janet Bradzik, Ed Mirabitter, Vernon Staub, Enrico and Ida Canini, Robert Kuhn, Mario Marcelletta, Adala Tabaka, Arlene Goivara, Ted and Barbara Collins, Gerald Shognessi, Paul Thompson, Martin Mahoney Sr. And for our personal needs that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, Help us to be attentive to the voice of Jesus the shepherd, to trust in him and to follow in his footsteps. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of an ending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, but throughout this Easter season, to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, even the heavenly powers and the angelic host. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You love the human race. You always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, he gave you thanks, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more he gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer to you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offerings of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed in the image of your Son and confirm in us the bond of communion with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, 
with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, and her beloved husband Joseph, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with Saint Kenneth, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be kept free from sin, safe from needless worry or anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look instead upon the faith of the church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit at home, please feel free to give to each other a sign of peace. Behold our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. How happy are we to be called this day to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And together we can pray our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And together we pray our post-communion prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of the Eucharist that we have just received. We ask that you watch over, bless, and give strength to the members of our St. Kenneth community who are not here with us today, especially those who are sick and homebound. Lord, you invite us to live our faith each day by helping those in need and offering comfort to those in sorrow. You teach us to be compassionate to those who are suffering and to value and treasure all human life. In this Eucharist, we have celebrated your life, death, and resurrection. May we continue to live the gospel by sharing our gifts in gratitude. Bless your servants who now go forth to bring the bread of life to those who are unable to be with us, that through sharing the Eucharist here on earth, we may Monday note to come to know your full presence in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.